Greetings ladies and managers, and welcome to this latest narration of the web series, The Survivor Becomes a Dungeon. If you're new to the series, there is a playlist listed down below in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 115, Isak Point of View. The following morning, Isak found himself in a better mood than he had been in a very long time. He wasn't sure if he'd call it a date, but the quiet dinner between the two of them was so enjoyable that he doubted that he could have done more to enjoy the night if he tried. Sure, they didn't do much besides eat and quietly talk, but it was that time they spent together that meant a lot to him. Now that he thought about it, he really didn't have much to say and did a lot more listening than anything else, though that was most likely due to how uncomfortable it was for him to talk nowadays. Thankfully, Mary was more than willing to talk enough for the two of them as they reflected on their experiences since coming to this place, idly gossiping about this and that or talking about Fitmori and his beasts. All in all, he was looking forward to the next time that they could do something like that again, though it was highly unlikely that they get to eat alone all too often, especially considering how it sounds like she's getting along with almost everyone, whereas he only has a select few of the group that he's comfortable around. He shouldn't be too greedy when it comes to taking up a time, should he? Maybe if he was a little greedier, they might have gotten closer a long time ago. He was pulled from his thoughts soon enough, his eyes opening as he stopped his meditating upon Jolie's arrival with Fitmori, the two talking about something or another. He wasn't sure about what since he hadn't been paying attention until just now. He looked over at them as the two crossed through the empty threshold leading into the stone building that they had been staying in, respectfully bobbing his head once at Jolie while remaining in a kneeling position. So, is that alright with you? Jolie asked, looking at Vermori after taking a moment to acknowledge Isak. But Morish flashed a small smile and shrugged a bit. If you're fine with an old man like me, sure, I don't mind, he mused kindly before looking over at Isak, beckoning him to get to his feet. Isak, for his part, just looked a little confused, getting to his feet before silently regarding Jolie with a quirk brow. Jolie smiled, jutting a thumb over to Vermori who stood by the entryway behind her. We're going to have you two spar for a little bit so that I can best determine how to train you moving forward. I've heard about your sparring session with Xanatul, so I already have an idea of what you're capable of. But I still want to see you in action for myself, she explained simply enough, before turning to look at Mori. Don't rough him up too much, though I want to see what you're capable of too, she enthused kindly. I'll do my best not to, but Mori mused a little before looking over at Isak. Well, come along then, he said as he beckoned Isak to follow, soon making their way into the street of the fake neighborhood. Once outside, Vidmori proceeded to unbutton his armor and even pull off his shirt, leaving himself in just pants as the clothes and armor seemingly disappeared into thin air. Isak looked on with confusion as he glanced between Jolie and Vidmori curiously. Should I? he asked, Jolie quietly, not sure if he needed to also take off his shirt. Jolie didn't acknowledge Isak just yet, instead walking closer and looking over at Mori's simulated wounds and letting out a low whistle. Jeez, you've got more souvenirs than most veterans I know. But Mori chuckled a bit, though it sounded vaguely hollow to Isak, as he went about pulling out chunks of wood from seemingly nowhere and slowly shaping them into blunt swords. Yeah, these aren't even half of them. This body revire made for me, it was me in my thirties. I'm pretty sure that I was in my sixties when I finally died, he mentioned offhandedly, before looking down at himself, his left hand tracing a particularly nasty looking scar before looking back to shaping the second sword. Not to discount your veterans, but this is the result of having to survive every day that I was alive, rather than just fighting a war with rules and morals that could end any day, he explained before holding our wooden sword by the blade over to Isak. Here you go, Jody nodded slowly still looking over at Mori's back with renewed curiosity, before remembering that Isak had asked her a question. Uh, um, no, I don't think you have to, she said, glancing over at Mori for confirmation, since it seemed that he was taking the lead for this part. But Mori glanced between the two of them, having noticed their gazes on him. Now they flashed a bit of a smile. Oh, you don't have to undress like me. I just didn't want my new clothes getting damaged. Not to mention I don't actually need armor because this body can't feel pain, he explained before looking Isak over. If anything, I recommend getting whatever pieces of your own armor that still fit, at least your braces for arm protection. Isak bobbed his head intently, making his way back into the building that he'd been staying in for the last several days, and collecting what gear still fit. Securely fastening the armor around his arms and shoulders, 
He made his way back outside to see that Mori had built a sparring ring of stone and was quietly speaking with Jody about something or another. Isak hopped the stone railing, but Mori looked him over again before nodding in approval. There we go, just to be sure that we make use of your armor if you're unable to fully dodge an attack. Your armor is there to take the hit. You just have to make sure to put it in the way of whatever is coming to hurt you. Isak nodded once more as he regarded with Mori. How are we doing this? he asked quietly, holding his wooden sword as he absently tested its weight and balance to get a feel for it. But Mori stroked his chin for a moment before flashing a bit of a smile. I want you to do your very best to hurt me, he said simply, owning him a quirked brow from Isak as he tilted his head in response. But Mori just chuckled softly as he continued. It's all about mindset, as you've never killed before and you're likely to hesitate or hold back if you're thinking you're trying to kill me. So instead, you need to think about hurting me, aim for my limbs, try to get me to slow down, and cripple my movement, he explained, sounding almost professional now. The air around him, changing as Vitmori started taking up a defensive stance, wielding the sword in his right hand while keeping his left hand free. As for me, every three times you fail to get a good hit on me, I'll strike you back. So be mindful, and don't forget to maintain your own defense, he mentioned while flashing an almost teasing smile. Whenever you're ready, go for this first swing. Isak couldn't help but swallow a little nervously. It was one thing to watch Vidmori fight someone else, though actually facing Vidmori head on brought a sense of unease that Isak wasn't expecting. He took a moment to consider what he wanted to do, his eyes glancing at Vidmori's shoulder before taking a step towards and performing a hard vertical slash. Moving quickly, but not too fast, Vidmori closed the distance instead of dodging, as he used his left forearm to smack away Isak's blade before bringing up his own blade with his right hand and stopping it short of chopping Isak's neck. But Mori flashed a bit of a smile while locking eyes with Isak, disengaging as he took a step back. That was all right, strong stance and good fall. I can tell you're honest too, but you're not too strong or fast enough to be that honest just yet, he said before taking up a defensive stance again. Be more confident in your follow-through. Remember, I'm just wood. I won't feel it. Isak could only swallow. His heart started to race and pound as he felt the lingering sensation around his throat. If this hadn't been a training match, he was almost certain that he would have lost his head without even realizing what happened. He felt the heat starting to swell in his chest as his heart continued to race, his senses sharpening distinctly as he readied himself again. He felt the sensation of battle rush during training before, but it was never this pronounced. He briefly wondered if this was thanks to the changes caused by the Drake Wardens, or perhaps his manner heart. Regardless, Isak turned his attention back on Vitmori and stepped forward again, moving faster than he anticipated, while doing a horizontal slash and going for Vitmori's sword arm. Vitmori responded by bringing his sword up and parrying the strike with a strong swipe, which caused Isak's sword arm to swing out wide, leaving him exposed to a strike that Vitmori didn't take advantage of. But Mori didn't say anything this time, but he looked rather intrigued as he seemed to stare at Isak's chest for whatever reason, while Isak quickly stumbled back, retreating and fixing his stance. Now on edge, Isak attempted to score at least one hit on Vidmori as he launched forward with a lunge, aiming for Vidmori's center mass. Though, even as he committed to the lunge, he could already see Vidmori starting to sidestep, easily dodging the desperate strike before kicking Isak's legs out from beneath him, making him spill onto the stone floor with a paint grunt. But Mori was soon by Isaac's side, extending a hand out to help the young guard back to his feet. Despite being vaguely frustrated at being so easily taken down, even after everything he'd gone through in the last several days, Isaac took up Vidmori's hand with little complaint, getting back to his feet before letting out a heavy sigh. It doesn't feel like anything's changed, despite all that has definitely changed already, he mentioned rather miserably. At that, Vidmori couldn't help but chuckle before gently patting Isaac's shoulder. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with getting your ass kicked every now and again, especially during training. Make sure to keep picking yourself up and get ready for it to happen again all over again until you're the one kicking ass. He enthused kindly when he pulled away, taking a step back before intently staring at Isaac's chest again. But Mori's words did bring a small smile to Isaac's face, though he did feel just a little put off by Vidmori's sudden intense staring. After a couple more moments, he started to feel rather self-conscious as he brought his arms across his chest before quirking a brow at Vidmori. Well, what are you doing? Studying the way the manner seems to be traveling through your body. 
It's flowing around like your blood, he explained, before seemingly realizing something and glancing up to notice Isak's expression. Ah, sorry about that. I didn't mean to be rude, he mentioned rather apologetically, while stepping back and standing tall once more. Before Isak could even ask his question, Jody spoke up, sounding both intrigued and impressed. You can actually see his mana heart and the way it moves mana around his body. But Maury chuckled almost sheepishly as he scratched the back of his head before looking back over at Isak. Yeah, though I suppose I got a little carried away. I swear I didn't mean to leer like that, he explained rather apologetically. Isak simply shook his head, having been more confused than anything. No, no, no problem, uh, it's fine. Uh, so, so, so what did you see? he asked, now more curious than anything as he leaned back and relaxed against the stone railing. Jolie also looked rather interested in what Fudmori had to say, coming over and leaning onto the stone railing from the outside of the training ring. Fudmori looked vaguely surprised by the question before seriously considering it, his wooden sword vanishing into thin air as he tucked a hand into his pocket while using the other hand to stroke his chin in a thoughtful way. I'm uh, not sure how best to put it into words. It's like, well, uh, it flowed around a lot like your blood, a fresh pulse of mana coursing through your extremities with every thump of your heart. It wasn't nearly as strong or even as intense compared to what I saw in Rionum's mana heart during my match with him, but it was there. If I had to make a comparison, it was the difference between a trickle of water from a water skin to a stream of water out of a spigot of a barrel. Jolie chuckled a little bit, gently smacking Isak's arm with the back of her hand. Hear that? A whole water skin. She mused before looking at Vomori once again. Let's keep up this pace for now. I want Isak facing off against someone who can't make use of Manahan before I start sparring with him. But Mori seemed to be offended by Jody's description, before clearly scoffing with mock exaggeration. I see how it is, sure. I suppose I'll do my best to challenge him. He mused before looking at Isak once more as he pulled the wooden sword out from thin air and rested it against his shoulders. Let's get on with it. It was only now that Isak realized that his day was just barely getting started, and he had a lot of sparring ahead of him. At the very least, he wasn't being used like some sort of punching bag for Xanatul anymore. Ultimately, the training didn't turn out to be as bad as he was anticipating, but Mori never went too far, pushing Isak just enough to make him try a little harder each time. Even when Isak was hit or grappled, it was almost like he was being struck just hard enough for the flat of the blade to fall over with no follow-up. Despite hours passing, he wasn't worked to exhaustion like he had been with Xanatul, and Vidomori actually took the time to teach him all sorts of interesting techniques for close combat that even Jody took interest in learning about. It took some time to really come to terms with it, but after spending the better half of the day with Vidomori as a sparring partner, the unsettling anxious feeling that he had about the wooden man just seemed to fade. The way Vidomori carried himself reminded him of a kindly older man who just really knew his way around a blade. And when the elf mage came over and asked Vidmori to join her for some kind of magic stuff, Isak found himself surprisingly disappointed at having to stop so soon. Well, that's me for the day. Let's do this again soon, Vidmori enthused, pulling his shirt out from nowhere before putting it back on. He then looked at Isak, approaching him and holding his hand out. Don't think I've forgotten about that talk we're supposed to have. Come find me later when you're feeling up to it, he expressed kindly as he pulled away, saying his goodbyes to Jody, as well as when he followed Revire out. Now then, time for part two of today's training, Jody suddenly said once before they were alone again. Same rules as before, you get three tries before I hit back, she explained as she hopped the stone railing, conjuring a whoop of water with one hand while taking up one of the wooden swords. With a soft sigh, Isak nodded in response as he took up his wooden sword again, though this time... He felt just a little more confident with himself as his manner heart starts to pound with anticipation. End of chapter. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps. Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomer Waffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnold, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azricol. Thank you very much.